I'm very happy to be here and, and my talk here will have two parts. The first part I'm trying to cover what advances have happened. Again, uh, um, most of the audience would have listened to talks about advances in myeloma that have occurred in the last 10 years. Some of the ones that I'll highlight are, in the last few years, we've had many important trials that have provided a great deal of clarity on how myeloma should be treated if we had all, all the available tools. Um, so for example, I'll be talking about the fact that a newly diagnosed myeloma patient today can get a, a, a frontline regimen of botezomib, lenalidomide, dex, followed by transplant, followed by maintenance therapy, and expect to live 10 plus years with a four year survival rate of 85% or so. And that's great. The first progression on that regimen would occur about four years into their disease. Second line, we have the monoclonal antibody daratumumab base combinations, which can probably give them another two or three years. So we've almost got the first seven years of, uh, of, of young fit patients covered with just two simple regimens. Um, this is great. And so this has also lent clarity into how to approach a new patient. Now there are problems in the sense that uh, not every country has VRD available for frontline. Not every country has daratumumab approved. So these are things that we have to work out, but I'm sure it'll be worked out in the next year or two. We've also had some more clarity on the role of transplant um, based on the latest New England Journal paper, which was a burning question is in the era of new drugs, does tra transplant still have value? And what we've learned is yes, it does have value. It does add probably a year or year and a half of progression-free survival to patients, um, but what the trial shows is that the timing may not be that critical for overall survival. So whether patients have the transplant early or delayed, they seem to have the same length of time. This then allows at least some patients the flexibility of when they can do the transplant. So for example, you and I, if we get myeloma, would we want to get, have it over with and do the transplant? Or would we say, I want to control my life for right now, I'm not ready, maybe four years from now I'll be ready. And that's something now we can give patients as a choice. And some people may want to get it over with, some people may want to delay. But not everyone can do that. You know, this only applies to standard risk patients who are relatively young. Um, I'm going to talk about the differences in maintenance therapy that we need to use. Uh, for example, lenalidomide maintenance is clearly effective, prolonged survival, but it works mainly for the standard risk patients. So we need to really clarify that for the high and intermediate risk patients, a different type of maintenance approach with proteasome inhibitors is needed, and that's what we do at Mayo. Uh, so I'll cover some of these advances, the new drugs that have happened. And the second half of my talk will be a recap of the New Delhi talk. Um, because many of the audience members have not, were not there at the International Myeloma Workshop. So I will be presenting to them um, my ideas for what we need to do in the future and go over those five things that I mentioned earlier.